Hey folks, Eric Woldridge here with the Additive Guru channel and today we're going to do a quick demo on how to take a selfie scan and process it in Mesh Mixer so that you can print it out with a 3D printer. Now this is assuming that you've gotten your scan in some way, maybe you used a uh, picture or photographs to actually uh, stitch together using various softwares that can do photograph stitching to get a model or maybe you used a scanner or a scanner app on your phone whatever the case may be. Once you have the file in and, and you're probably familiar with this in terms of scanning is that scan files are typically not perfect. In the case here I actually have uh, with my mother actually my mother didn't give me permission so she's probably gonna be mad at me but I did get a scan of my mom when we were testing out some new equipment and I brought the image in or the scan file in as an OBJ or uh, an STL file. Now you can see right off the bat there's a lot of going on that Mesh Mixer doesn't like about it and we're going to start off the process once it's in by uh, closing up those cracks. And actually before I even do that notice that it's hard for me to orbit this thing around a whole lot of directions so one of the things I do first of all when I get into Mesh Mixer is actually tell it to do a transform and I will rotate it 90 degrees we have seen this happen a lot as they come in at odd angles and so we want to get nice and flat so it's a little bit easier to work with. The next thing we're going to do is you see all the blue that you have there we're going to tell it to close cracks and then we're going to tell it to make solid. A little processing there and we are good. I hit accept and so the file is now ready to go. It does have a object that is part of the object browser that you see is closed out which is fine. All right. So there we go and a lot of times what we do when we get into working with selfies is we'll do some sculpting, we'll find things a little odd. For example see this little artifact right here, a little floating piece of hair that was caught up in the scan. I'm going to get rid of that by using my sculpting tool and one that works well for this process is the shrink smooth and I will decrease the size of the feature. There we go. And I'll just sort of make it disappear that way. And I'll look around for any kind of other little floaters or oddities that uh, might need to be addressed. Hair um, is oftentimes some things that get a lot of little artifacts with when it does the scan, so you got to kind of watch out for it. I may also take care of this little bit right here that you see because that's just going to be one more little thing I won't have to add support material to. I am adjusting the size of my brush every time so it's a little easier for me to work on one piece without it catching a bunch of other things. So I kind of smooth that out a little bit, shrink smooth, there we go, it's not too bad. Alright, so we have that. Now another thing that we like to do with our selfies is the fact when we do these selfie sculptures is to get rid of things that don't really matter. You know, typically when we're doing these type of uh, uh, busts of folks, there's no point in having the shoulders and having the back. Uh, and we also have learned that it, it's better if we kind of tilt the selfie upwards a little bit. So I'm going to go back into my edit and do transform with mesh mixer and rotate it up a few degrees maybe six degrees there and say accept and then I'm going to do a plane cut drag it down to right below where that point of contact is where it's still cutting through everything making sure that I hit the blue option blue button here to make sure it's keeping this half and cutting this half and hitting accept and so now when it prints it'll have a little bit more of a head tilted up which is always really good for selfie results now the next thing we're going to do is again we're going back to the shoulders thing. We don't really need all this. Most of the time when you see busts and those type of things there's just really the neck is the focus point. And I can take care of that real quickly with another plane cut. And I will rotate it and kind of you know get my arrows down here where I can see everything. Rotate it a little bit this way. Hit the arrow to switch it back the other direction. Get a good feel for where my plane cut is. And I am going to make sure that I have enough sort of shoulder left so that I can actually do support material off the shoulders to hit the hair later on. Maybe I can tilt it up just a little bit this way where we're still not hanging out beyond it and support material can be built off at that point and work just fine. That looks pretty good and I'll hit accept. So we've chopped her that way. Do another plane cut to the other side and rotate this way. 
With mesh mixes, there's often not a lot of controlled values. Sometimes you do have to kind of visually look at things a lot to uh, get a feel. You know, I wasn't paying attention to what exact angle I might have been on the last one. And so I'm going to just kind of look at this zone and compare. That looks maybe about the same. And again, pulling it in just a little bit because I want to make sure I can do support material off of the uh, shoulders if possible. And I'm going to say accept. So now we've trimmed off that part. And again, on the back, there's no real benefit to having the full blade there. Typically, we'll, we'll let it go all the way down in the front. But in the back, we can do another plain cut to reduce our print time and also just reduce the, you know, the necessity of the print. There's no major reason to have that there. And just takes up unnecessary amount of space. So I'll tilt it this way, slide it up a little bit. Maybe like that. And you can leave all this shoulder if you want to. There's no rule that says you have to. But I am going to turn it that way. And I can also turn around and do one more plain cut at the front just to see what it looks like. A lot of times we don't do this, but I just want to give a feel for it. And what it will look like if I do it that way. Maybe a little bit more of an angle. And accept. And I can decide if I like that or if I don't. Um, I'm going to try it. I think I'll keep it and see what happens. All right, so now we have basically eliminated down to what we're really after, and that is the bust of the person. And now we would typically go through and uh, do some smoothing and catching of like little edges and all kinds of things. And at this point in time, the selfie, is, the selfie mesh itself is yours to control. You can do all kinds of cool things if you wanted to with it. Uh, add on features, take away features. Um, the scan caught quite a bit of, of good stuff there. There are probably some oddities that we see in this zone, so I can go ahead and do maybe a, a quick smooth, uh, a little flattened smooth there works great. I can go in and kind of flatten off that just a little bit because that might have been some artifact work, maybe a little more strength. And smooth that, any kind of little things where this scanner may not have seen everything just right. Maybe right in there a little bit. There we go. Also, you notice that there's a little bit of an oddity on the bulge of the eyes there. We do see that sometimes. So I'll just kind of go in and hold the uh, tool right here and have it do a little bit of a flatten. The particular scanner we used was the structure sensor on this one. And uh, it's not necessarily known for super, super high depth. And sometimes you'll realize that, you know what, it wasn't that bad to begin with, and you might decide to actually uh, undo things. So you can always do that too. I'm going to do a little shrinkage here too. Sometimes you can actually make it worse, which it looks like is what I'm doing right now. And if that ever happens, all you have to do is just hit undo a few times to pull it back to the way it was. Because with the sculpting tool, oftentimes you can get into situations where your sculpting is causing more issues than good. And so I can actually take it back to the point and I can work with my sculpting tools to pull it back down. But for the most part, that is just little tools you can do with your sculpting process. What we've addressed so far are some of the key things and that of course is getting the object in, closing the cracks, uh, making it solid, and then maybe doing some trimming off edges and uh, whatnot. Now this would be also a great opportunity to bring in other files. For example, like maybe we want to put it on a pedestal. We can actually put the pedestal in the space and also add that to it. So that's how we process a lot of our selfies. And, um, you know, and this works for other scanned objects as well. All right, now, uh, assuming that you get to the point that you're ready to export this out, your next step, of course, would be to go to File and actually say Export. And you can export this. Export it. Uh, right off the side, there we go. So, in course, you can name it whatever you want to name it. Uh, in this case, I'll just say example uh, selfie. And it is saved as you go. Now, one other thing to notice, too, also, was the fact you can choose an STL or an OBJ. 
if you want to. And if your scan was in 3D with color, you could actually choose some of the other formats. And of course, most printers can, can easily, or most slicing softwares can easily work with OBJs and STL files, uh, in some cases PLYs. So it just kind of depends on what your printer is set up for. But anyway, that's of course the, the last step. Then I would take it in and do the slicing on it. Another little trick that we have seen, I'll show you that real fast just uh, before we finish up, is the fact that when you are doing this design work, it never hurts to bring your uh, STL file in early and kind of see how it's going to build support material to see if there's anything specifically you can get rid of that you may not need. Um, in this case, with simplified, you can see that I've got this little uh, one little bit of support material here and here that I could easily go into the model and fix so I don't have it there because you know weird little supports like that sometimes get issues with clearing those out and that may be a problem for me. So it never hurts to bring in an STL file to your slicer just to see what the support material is going to be and to catch any mistakes that you could fix on the design side before you get too far into the printing side of the process. All right. So just something to consider and uh, that we found useful over time. But beyond that, uh, we can um, you can keep on working with a project like this, keep smoothing, keep adding features, do whatever you like to do. But that those are the basics. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our social media pages, our webpage. Check out some of our other videos that you might find useful for some kind of uh, design or 3D printing applications. And we do appreciate your attendance. So have a good one, and we'll talk to you later.